Between 200 and 1,000 meters below the ocean surface lies the mesopelagic zone. In this depth range, only a minute fraction of sunlight is present. Inhabitants of this dimly lit realm face many challenges. Chief among these, they must avoid being seen by predators. To stay concealed from predators, many creatures here use camouflage, such as transparency, reflective surfaces, or dark coloration. Others use more deceptive means of disguise. One such deception is visual mimicry. This method of protection is commonly observed in the insect world. In mimicry systems, there are three participants, the model, the mimic, and the dupe. By copying the model's distinctive appearance, the mimic evades detection by duping potential predators. For mimicry to be successful, the habitat must contain an abundance of unpalatable models. In the mesopelagic zone, the abundant siphonophore, Nanomia bijuga, is one such potential model. Siphonophores not only lack sufficient nutrient density to make them worthwhile prey for most active predators, but they also have numerous stinging cells. Recently, scientists at Ambari have used video collected by remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, to describe the first case of siphonophore mimicry by a cephalopod. Caratuthus calyx, a common, solitary squid inhabiting the temperate waters of the North Pacific, is an ambush predator. They hover, motionless in the water column, and use bioluminescent lures on their tentacle tips to attract crustaceans or small fish, and then grab them with their tentacles and arms. We discovered that like other mesopelagic squids, juvenile and subadult caratuthus use a diversity of body patterns consisting of postures, colors, bioluminescence, and locomotion to help them communicate, capture prey, and evade predation. Caratuthus calyx is commonly known as the swordtail squid, owing to the large, ornamented tail that only the juvenile life stage possesses. An intact tail more than doubles the length of these squid and allows them to save energy by providing buoyancy and stability. But the tail may also serve another function. We discovered that Caratuthus juveniles, when in the presence of Nomia, orient and color their tail and body to closely resemble these siphonophores and thus remain concealed from predators, not to mention scientists. However, this mimicry is not consistent across life stages. As juveniles progress into the subadult life stage, they lose their tail, and also the ability to resemble nanomia. When observed by ROV cameras, subadults did not demonstrate behaviors mimicking nanomia. It is likely that the smaller and more vulnerable juvenile caratuthus avoid predation as a result of mimicking nanomia's appearance and behavior. In this case, the model was the siphonophore nanomia, the mimic was the squid caratuthus, and the dupe was would-be predators, and us. This is Ben Burford from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute.